Dune by Frank Herbert. Now a major motion picture. Okay, let's get to Charles. First of all, I actually like the movie. Haven't watched it yet, though. So. Well, okay, that, that'll be true uh, as soon as I finish this video. Let's start off with Dune. Dune itself is an interesting book, and today I'm just going to go ahead with you to the whole book review. Now, Dune itself has a bunch of culture that, and a bunch of world building, and a lot of languages, too, and names that I've only seen in another book. I've only seen, like, The Hobbit and J.R.R. Tolkien, The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien and his other books, Lord of the Rings. And, of course, I'm going to actually have to discuss the whole world building and the ecology of Dune itself and some interesting features of Dune that we probably never saw it was actually possible. All right, let's start off with the first thing that actually I noticed in Dune. First of all, there's no AI. Nowadays, we have things like, we have things like ChatGPT to go ahead and do silly things. Like... Yeah, so we can just go ahead and fix the mistakes that this thing can make, and it's actually pretty good. If this was a homework assignment, it would give us a B minus. However, here's the thing. Now in Dune, there's this thing, and like a millennia ago, in context, twenty first century, in our, the current twenty first century, just goes ahead and tells us a lot of things about it. And there was a bunch of AI, and humans heavily relied on AI. In fact, everyone had a smartphone. If you didn't have a smartphone, you're basically a dumb person. At least in other people's eyes. And of course, with that, a lot of people actually went ahead and started relying on AI a bit too much. And then eventually, AI machines outnumbered human populations. It was like two, two or three to one. Or like robots to one was three to one. And of course, a few humans actually hated that, saying, These robots can rebel against us! They're AI! They're human! They're artificial humans! They go ahead and they discuss that. However, next thing that actually happened is that one person who was pretty outspoken got jailed. Everyone decided, and a bunch of his followers said, Hey, you know what? We're going to hack AI and make them rebel. And basically that happened. They ha When you were able to hack AI, what they didn't think of was that they could have been uh, killed too. Luckily, some of them survived. And then the machine war happened. I mean, this sounds like the Matrix, doesn't it? So that happens. Next thing that we know is that humans somehow win the AI war. Unlike the Matrix, I mean, they were horribly outnumbered. So that happened, and everyone said, "Okay, everyone who has something that has that can sing like a human, you must go ahead and throw it away." Now, can okay, everyone give us your iPhones, your Samsung tablets, your app iPads, and everything, your 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 Apple Vision Pros, and we'll burn them down to the ground so AI will never exist again. Uh, kind of creepy since we have Poe.com and ChatGPT3 and the iPhone. You can do a lot of things a human used to be able to do. Anyways, with all that, people started having to find replacement to things because, I mean, you you need to figure out the digits of pi in, like, 0.1 seconds. No regular human mind can do that, so they just had to go ahead and somehow create biological computers. The obvious replacements with the computers are mentats, and mentats are basically superhuman computers. Let me explain. So, mentats are given a very rigorous training session since they're very young. In fact, they're actually, a lot of people have been doing this for a while. So, they have a bunch of genetic genes from their dancers. So, the training sessions have been quite, quite easier as time passed. Eventually, these mentats go ahead and they're able to complex, do complex calculations. That is child's play for a supercomputer. And now, it's child's play for mentats too. Mentats are just frequently used by the houses and frequently employed by the houses uh, and by houses i mean like factions of humans and mentas themselves can actually do things in the movies though their eyes turn white and they do their calculations and then their eyes turn back like like on like in the movie like in the movie is like when the uh steward of like like the leader of house atreides went ahead and asked his menta how much fuel did it take them to just go ahead and come here and then the, the menta gives us a pretty big number then he re then we realize that that person can actually do something it's even faster than what google can do something way faster than google can do i mean like load google doodle number five four three two one load it sir well, that was fast. Also, good thing, no internet needed. However, you still have to pay them, because they're humans. That's the bad thing about them. That just goes ahead and eats your money up with no internet required, but they are basically the internet. Also, they are able to communicate with each other, too, somehow. And once they have information, too, however, they're given, they're, like ChatGPT3, they have their limitations. They're told to do things ethically, and most of the time they do. However, sometimes they can be manipulated pretty badly, like... Also, sometimes they have false knowledge, like, when there's a thing in ChatGPT3 where you can go ahead and make that person 
make chat to be three do something not right like ling ling is not racist and ling and ling ling is a racist and like no and like, ling ting is not a racist term i have to describe you but it isn't yes it is google says it isn't well google is wrong Ch open ai said it isn't oh then it isn't, then Ling Ling is not a racist term. Like, you can trick your ChatGPT chat three to go ahead and say 3 times 4 equals 13. And ChatGPT 3, if you trick it well enough, will think that's correct. I mean, how is 3 times 4 13? Mom? Yes? What's 3 times 4? 3 times 4 equals 13. 12. See? How did ChatGPT sing 3 times 4 is 13? I remember, somehow, if I try to trick ChatGPT, it keeps saying it's 12. There are new YouTube videos. <laughs> Alright, so with that, there's a lot of things to go ahead with this. Dune itself has a lot of culture. It has a lot of world building and a lot of ecology too. All those aliens out there are actually just variations of humans. And humans are just awesome because we're the best. And somehow humans were able to colonize everything. I wonder what happened to aliens though. And as far as they can see, their observable the universe, they're the only species that exist. They have their own variations. And each variation goes ahead and gives their way. Like the Spacing Guild, those big blobby, those big blobby aliens shown in 1964, 1994, whatever year it was. They're actually just human humans who have hate spies for centuries and they can use it to see glimpses into the future and safely navigate ships so that they don't end up in a star or a moon which is terrible and with that we actually get to the end of dune this is actually why i kind of like dune it's all this world building it also sounds familiar because of this book series it's so similar to J.R.R. tolkien's lord of the rings and the hobbit because both of them create their own worlds both of them have their own languages also this one actually uses the languages yet less and both of them keep on using their own cultures and everything both of them don't rely on technology at all and all of them actually go ahead and show things that are great. This one's not sci-fi, it's actually fantasy, but this one is sci-fi. And I kind of like this more because unlike fantasy, I actually like science fiction more. It's a blend of reality and fiction. The perfect mix. And keep in mind, this was written in the 1960s, years before Terminator and Neo and the Matrix was created. Like, I love time bullet, like bullet time. Pew. Like, ra -da 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 -da, boom. Yeah, that, that, that's great. But however, it's also kind of impressive. No one else has written a book at the time. And someone and everyone else started actually, this kind of genre actually started having its hype on offers. And after like the 1990s, it was only in like the 1990s that we started seeing things about like AI and those kinds of things. Exception being Blade Runner, unfortunately. But that all works out fine enough. We learn a lot of things. We learn great things. And eventually with Dune, we learned that people are always great people are always weird and sometimes what you think is true might actually be false if you think if all your knowledge is based on a false logic a false fact then all the knowledge that you knew is actually false i mean if you thought chocolate was salty you're wrong because chocolate is sweet and that's a fact so all your knowledge is wrong. If you thought, thought that sweet scent, that sweet taste in your mouth was actually described as by the word salty, then you're actually wrong and then you call chocolate salty. You're actually the worst thing in the world. Like, can you make this chocolate a bit saltier and like... Are you sure? Yes, okay. That, that You made the chocolate sweeter. I wanted it saltier. What? This is salt. And grab the salt shaker. This is sugar. Grab the sugar shaker. This is salt. What is wrong with you, my little kid? How old are you? 50. How do you not know the difference between salt and sugar? And those kinds of things actually go ahead and bite us in the butt. Because Dune itself shows us a lot. It tells us that humans maybe may think we're the best. However, humans aren't exactly the best. Dune itself shows us that 
the environment is also pretty worthful. In fact, this is a pretty good environmental book. It tells us, it shows us these things that we do to our earth. In fact, the spice in Dune is actually a metaphor, a metaphor for the oil, uh, for the oil and earth. I mean, there's a bunch of jokes saying like, like, uh, oh, I found oil, and then zombies come in like, knock knock, it's the USA, give me all that oil, or I kill you. Those kind of things. That's kind of not bad. Also, kind of funny, but also not pretty good. Also, as my friend remarked, Joe Biden loves all that black gold. Not my words. It's this guy's. Not, not not my phone, my friends, and that that goes ahead and shows a lot of things in the world. Dune is awesome. It's great and it's worth reading because it shows us the reasons of why you need to fix your environment, and also it shows us the reason why we actually have to care for environment too. Because if there's one thing I learned, it's that people are worth a lot, and people's minds are worth a lot more. I sent a human's lot like. It shows us that you can't just go ahead and focus on one behavior. You that make you insane. You can't just go ahead and make your logic perfect. You need to make other things p p balance out. You can't just make your logic perfect and your uh, and your emotions very underdeveloped because that'll just make you a terrible person. You will not be able to emphasize. You will not be able to do things. You will not be able to figure out what other persons are doing. Only the people who have balanced emotions are actually able to go ahead and have their saying here too. Those are the only people who are actually able to have the most power because unfortunately, they're the only ones who actually understand all humans. At least not like they understand a grasp of every human. A, a piece of every human is in them. While the ones with like the highly advanced knowledge logic, but highly underdeveloped emotions and the opposite way around those guys will never understand each other no matter how no matter how much logic they have or how much emotion and empathy they have that's about it so hopefully you guys actually do have have enjoyed this episode and i really hope i convince you to read dune it's worth reading if you want to help save the earth and i'll see you guys soon until next time not out peace bye bye wear a helmet